I want to talk about some practical considerations related to Gibbs sampling in MCMC. So for MCMC, specifically, to be more precise, the Metropolis Tasting Algorithm, uh, we need to choose a proposal distribution. So how do we choose a good proposal distribution? What is a good proposal distribution? First thing, one thing I didn't mention before is that we will, we are guaranteed to get samples that uh, match the true distribution if we run MCMC long enough, as long as the proposal distribution one gives a non-zero probability to each possible state, that is each value of X that has non-zero probability according to our true distribution, we must have non-zero probability of proposing distributions to that x. And it's easy to see why. If we just had a zero probability of doing that, then we would just never sample those values and we would never see them. Uh, and more generally, there must be a path in a state space that is in all the possible values of x such that between every pair of x's with non-zero probability, again according to the true distribution, there must be some path of proposals, each with non-zero probability, that connect the two. That is to say, MCMC is essentially going to sort of sample different x's and explore the space, and there has to be some way for it to, from every possible uh, value of x with non-zero probability, it has to somehow be able to get to every other value of x with non-zero probability. You can see why that would be an issue. Let's say we have a distribution that looks something like this. And let's say our proposals just take us small distances in either direction. And let's say that this is not just low in the middle, but like actually zero probability. Well, uh, we're going to propose moves that take us here. We're going to see that has zero probability, so we're not going to accept those moves. We're going to stay in kind of this cluster. We're never going to end up in that cluster. So in that case, we're going to never sample uh, from this cluster. Uh, so even if there were kind of, so to handle that, one, we could include longer distance proposals. That is some proposals that take us all the way across this gap. Um, another, which is more reasonable practice, is for most distributions, there would be some non-zero probability in the middle. So even though this wouldn't happen very often, occasionally MCMC would accept those moves and take us across between the two and then occasionally go back. So that's what must be the case for a proposal distribution. In general, for a proposal distribution to work well, that is for us, for it to mix quickly, I'll talk about mixing in just a minute, but for it to mix quickly, that is after not too many samples, we want the following things to hold. One, we want reasonably low correlation between subsequent samples. The reason for that is if we choose moves, uh, proposals that take us just very small distance in kind of a state space, well, we're, it's going to take us many, many samples before we explore anything else. We also want reasonably high acceptance rate. Um, again, the reason is if we almost never accept our proposals, where we're just going to stay stuck and we're going to take a million proposals from exactly the same state before we ever accept a proposal. Now, note that these two desires are in opposition to one another, because um, generally we're going to have some, uh, some space of our x's. Let's draw another one that's a little less extreme here where generally it's going to be the case that nearby positions are 
uh, have similar probability. So if I'm taking small moves around here, notice that the probability isn't going to drop too much when I make these proposals, and therefore I'm going to have a reasonably high acceptance rate. Vice versa, if I make really large proposals, I'm going to often end up in parts of the state space that have almost zero probability, and therefore I'm not going to accept those proposals. But if I make small uh, small moves, then uh, that gives me very high correlation between subsequent samples. Vice versa, if I'm making very large moves, that kind of if I'm willing to make large moves, that means that my samples are relatively uncorrelated, but that's going to give me a low acceptance rate. So generally, we're trying to find proposal distributions that give us a happy medium between the two. I'll talk about how to diagnose that in just a minute. So some common proposal distributions. One is the Gibbs proposal distribution. We should just say that now. Again, we just uh, sample each variable according to the full conditional of its neighbors. Another one is Gaussian, where we add some small Gaussian noise, essentially some small Gaussian offset, to each, each value. That works if we have a big set of continuous values. Another, if we have, let's say, binary values, we could uh, make proposals where we just randomly flip each one of our binary variables, each with some probability. One thing that's really powerful about MCMC is it lets us make proposal distributions that involve a lot of kind of domain specific knowledge. So one very powerful type of proposal distribution would be some kind of block proposal. That is, uh, let's look at, for example, a icing model. Well, in Gibbs sampling, I was just sampling each value independently. But note that I can do inference efficiently for any, uh, any tree. So I could pick any row. Actually, let me use the middle row just for generality. Um, and I can quickly do inference over that row based on all the others. So I could, for example, do inference uh, over this whole row and resample it, resample the whole row at a time. Um, or I could use something even fancier if I really wanted, like this. That's technically a tree in pixels. That would probably be more complicated than I'd want to, but it's technically possible. Um, so there are lots of cases like that uh, that, that are possible. We're not going to go and do full uh, derivations here. Another case where that comes up often is in a model called a factorial hidden Markov model. That's like a hidden Markov model, but we have multiple hidden uh, states. It turns out to be quite hard to do inference in that in any other way, but by doing block sampling of each row separately, turns out we can use Gibbs sampling very efficiently. Uh, again, that would take you know probably a whole week to, to drive that algorithm. So I told you that the samples we generate will be correlated, at least our early samples, where it will be correlated with our initial sample. Um, so I'm just going to I'm just showing here an example of that. Here we have a particular x value and its value over iterations. So it looks like in this region, the samples are pretty good. That is, they're kind of all in the same range. It looks like we're continu continually exploring the whole um, distribution of reasonably high probability values of x. Whereas it looks like this range here at the beginning, it looks like we're kind of here just because we have this correlation with this initial value. It looks like this is the value we used to initialize. So generally what we do in MCMC and in Gibbs sampling is we throw out the first 
number of samples, maybe the first hundred or thousand or even a million samples. So one important step is generally to kind of make plots like this and try to diagnose when burn-in has occurred. Um, it turns out this is quite difficult to do in general um, because it can be hard to distinguish uh, uh, burn-in from mixing. I'll talk about that in another slide. But here's just an example of this. So uh, what we're showing here is a random walk of a variable that's between 0 and 20. So that is all, all of the different values of x have exactly the same probability. And with MCMC, we're making proposals that go one step in either direction. So uh, and in this case, we're starting at x equals 10. So if we run that for a bunch of iterations, let's say at 100 iterations, we might get something that looks like this. Now, notice something that's kind of interesting here, which is that even numbers have much higher probability than odd numbers. That's, uh, uh, it's, it's not too hard to see, kind of if you think about how the random walk works and how we kind of bounce off the walls, uh, that's, that's gonna give us this pattern. So even for this very simple model, even after 100 iterations, which is reasonably high, we still have this dependence on the initial value. Let's look at, for example, using x equals 17 in comparison. Uh, after 100 iterations, now we have slightly higher probability, meaning more samples coming from odd numbers. So it's, even, it's only after like 400 samples that even this very simple model has burned in. So that is just to say that uh, it can take a long time for burn-in to occur, especially in cases like this, where our uh, proposal is very small. That is, we're only willing to go one, one step at a time, one like plus one or minus one. Uh, and it's not always easy to be able to see when we have burned in versus when we haven't. The other thing we need to diagnose is mixing. That is, when we've generated enough samples that we can stop and use that as our uh, full set of samples versus do we need to keep running the algorithm and generate more samples. So let's look at this distribution here. This is a distribution with kind of two modes. And here we're using a proposal that, that has very kind of short moves. Now what's gonna happen in this case is because the moves are so short, notice that Metropolis Hastings really doesn't like to go kind of into this dip because the probability is low. So it's gonna to tend to accept moves that take it back out of the dip. So what's going to happen is it's going to start to go down and then it's going to get some moves that take us that propose moves in the other direction. It's always going to take those and it's going to come back out. So it's very unlikely that it's ever, except under very, very many moves, that's going to jump between the two modes. So you can see what happened here is we generated a bunch of samples and we generated a lot of samples. We generated a thousand samples from this distribution but notice that they're all positive. We're not getting any samples. So if we stopped here, we would conclude that this variable x is always positive, which of course would be a terrible conclusion because that's not the true distribution. Looking at it, it also looks like it's pretty well mixed, right? It hasn't done anything for a thousand iterations. Vice versa, Let's look at the case. So by the way, this was our proposal. We used a normal distribution with variance one. Vice versa, let's look at the case where we use a normal distribution with variance or standard deviation 500. Notice that, uh, by the way, I should say what our plot is here. 
Uh, the plot we're making here plots the value of x versus the different MCMC samples. Uh, and then this is just probability of x according to the true distribution. So now, what happens if we use a proposal distribution with a very high variance? So notice that that is often going to propose moves that like take us totally off the chart and take us to places that have very close to zero probability. Now those are almost always going to get rejected. So notice that what happens here is because we have so many moves rejected, we end up getting many samples from the same position. Notice that it looks like we spent like 30 iterations right here all in the very same value of x. So now after a thousand iterations, if we look at what our distribution looks like, it's very noisy because effectively it looks like we've only made, I don't know, 10 or 20 samples from x, even though we've run MCMC for a thousand iterations. So, but on the, on the upside, we've very clearly explored both of these peaks. So again, with the higher variance proposal, we are exploring the whole distribution, but it's taking us a really long time before we've mixed. That is, we've gotten a good representation of our total distribution. So what we're always looking for in MCMC is we wanna find kind of that sweet spot where we can quickly explore the whole distribution, but, uh, uh, where, we, where we explore the whole distribution, but we accept enough proposals to, uh, you know, to do that pretty quickly. So here we're using a proposal with variance or with standard deviation eight, and you can see this looks very nice. We're completely uh, exploring both peaks, and because you can see we accepted many of our proposals, where we don't get this kind of segmented. Uh, view and so it's not too noisy after a thousand iterations. A rule of thumb is that generally we're looking for accept probability around one third. That's kind of the rule of thumb you'll hear from people who do this a lot in practice. You don't want it to have to. You want you don't want your accept value to be or acceptance probability to be too high. That tends to indicate that you're in a case like this where you're not proposing kind of ambitious enough moves, and you're very likely missing whole chunks of your state space. Vice versa, if your acceptance probability is too low, let's say 1% or something, well, you just have to make so many samples that it gets to be really inefficient. So again, we're looking for an acceptance probability of about one third. Another note is, well, wouldn't it be better to throw out a bunch of our samples because our samples are very correlated. So wouldn't it be better to, let's say, use only every tenth sample or every hundredth sample? Then we would have much less correlated samples and we would need fewer of them to get a good estimate of our, uh, of our probability distribution. That's true that if we throw out, let's say, uh, if we only keep every tenth sample, we will require fewer samples to get a good estimate. Again, because those are uncorrelated. But that's generally not what you wanna do. The reason for that is that the limiting factor of MCMC tends to be the running time of uh, computing each step. That is computing sampling from the proposal distribution and deciding whether or not to accept. You have to do that many, many times. So that's the bottleneck in running time. So if you have a fixed amount of time you're willing to spend and you want the best estimate for your probability distribution, it turns out the best thing to do is to keep all of your samples apart from the ones you threw away because of burn-in at the beginning. Now vice versa, if your limiting factor is space, that is you can only afford to keep, let's say 10,000 samples, but you're willing to run for as long as you want, then your best bet is to throw away samples. That is to only keep every hundredth or every thousandth sample. Um, 
because again, then kind of each sample has more value independently. So that concludes our section on approximate inference. Uh, by the way, again, this is our last uh, content lecture before next week, which is going to be our bonus lectures. Uh, so I would say that uh, MCMC, by the way, this is, again, this approximate inference method, uh, one of two categories that are widely used, the other being variational inference, which we're not going to be able to talk about. So I would say that MCMC is, should kind of be your go-to method for anything non-trivial in probabilistic inference. So if you have some super simple problem, that is you're trying to do something with one with a 1D variable or a tree structured graphical model, we'll then use the exact inference methods we've talked about. But if it's anything non-trivial, for example, the icing model or any kind of a model with maybe 10 or 100 variables that don't have, that aren't you know very, very clearly structured, MCMC is almost always a good choice. It has the nice property that um, one, it's very easy to implement. All you need to do is pick some proposal distribution and then, and then let it go. Uh, it's not something, it's not like, for example, the EM algorithm where you have to uh, do a bunch of kind of relatively mathematically challenging derivation before you get to start running your, your algorithm. All you have to do is pick a proposal distribution. If you don't know what to use, then you can pick one of these super simple proposal distributions, like just adding a, a, a Gaussian difference to each, to each variable. Uh, and generally, for reasonably small problems, even just doing that will scale extremely effectively. Um, you know, probably being effective up to, you know, 100 variables or something like that, which is often good enough for, let's say, like a medical application. It also has a nice property that by working to create better proposal distributions, uh, you can make it work for almost any problem. So these days, uh, many of kind of the most challenging problems that we want to solve, things like protein folding, uh, are handled by using MCMC with a very clever proposal distribution. That is a proposal distribution that's uh, very intelligently defined such that it lets us make big moves in state space that still have relatively high acceptance probability. So um, in the case of protein folding is an example, uh, those would be moves that like you're, you're exploring the different conformations of the protein. There, there would be moves that maybe like move a whole chunk of the protein and see what does it look like if we like flip it on its side or something like that. And it's, it's, we've chosen using kind of our domain knowledge about the physics moves that in practice uh, tend to be accepted by MCMC uh, pretty often. And again, this tends to be effective for even the most challenging of computational methods. So I would say MCMC is good kind of from the only slightly non-trivial to the very uh, most uh, challenging problems. So you'll see it all over the place in practice. The one thing that's challenging about it is there is quite a bit of kind of uh, fiddling that's required for anything that's non-trivial. Uh, for example, it's, it can be kind of challenging and require a bunch of expert knowledge, which is why it's important you know, that, that we learn about it as people who are gonna go off and be practitioners in the field. It requires some, some uh, domain knowledge about both MCMC and the particular application to one, diagnose burn and mixing, and two, choose a proposal distribution such that burn and mixing happen reasonably quickly.